In this episode, we're giving a much needed makeover to our patio deck. Welcome back, barbarians. Today it's time we add a little bit of curb appeal to this thing. I don't know about you, but a flat, white, nondescript box truck, it's a little boring to look at from the outside. So I wanna make sure that when I pull this hatch down in the back and unroll my patio, that I'm turning some heads. So we gotta add some upgrades to the patio today. We're gonna start out with some speakers. And I'm installing these speakers directly into the wall. We're using a Dremel here to very slowly cut a circular pattern for these speakers into the wall through my tile. Like many things, this was the first time I've used this Dremel for this purpose. And uh, surprisingly, it did pretty well. It went through not only the tile, but the OSB behind it. And then in a couple spots, it went through uh, some two by four wood as well. Now these speakers are fairly thick, maybe about five inches thick with including the drivers on the back end of them. Luckily, we're gonna have that wall area on the inside of the truck on these sides for those speakers to be housed in. And we're gonna make sure this is waterproof. So we're adding, I'm adding silicone all the way around on these as well, both on the inside before I screw it in and along the outside after I fasten the speaker to the wall. These speakers in particular are the Infinity Primus six and a half inch speakers. And I gotta say, I've already used them a couple times on uh, trips and these things, as the kids would say, they clap. The second thing we're gonna add on the outside here, I think it's critical for any kind of outdoor operations is an external 120 volt wall outlet. So I'm gonna add a little extension line from my TV mount wall outlet all the way down to the outside wall. This is gonna be great for uh, if I wanna do any kind of outdoor cooking, maybe run a bug zapper outside, run some string lights, rope lights, whatever. There's a lot of different opportunities when you add an external wall outlet like this. We're adding a waterproof outlet cover to this as well so that that can stay covered anytime some rain comes down. Uh, due to the upgrade that I'm going to be placing on my patio, I have to actually remove the existing plywood from the patio and replace it with something a little bit thinner. So, regrettably, I have to rip off this plywood that's been on there for over a year now. And it wasn't an easy job. We had a lot of screws we had to take out, and this was fastened down with uh, construction adhesive as well. So it was a lot of straight up manual labor in the middle of this 102 degree Houston heat. I was surprised at the quality underneath though. There was really no deterioration. There wasn't any kind of mold. There was no wood deterioration. And this thing has been attached on here for over a year, like I said, just taking all kinds of beatings. It's been through snow, it's been through hurricanes, it's been through a lot of rain. And it was still in good condition. So that's a testament to at least my construction methodology when I made this originally. So we gotta scrape off all the remaining glue and make sure this there's a nice flat even surface for me to attach the new surface to. And this new surface is gonna be my eighth inch plywood boards. So I gotta trim it down to size just to get it to fit on the patio deck. I 
And again, this is going to serve two purposes. It's going to be a little bit lighter. It's going to save on weight because we are going to be adding weight to the patio. It's also going to be saving on space so that when I close this door, I can actually fit it in that small space that I do have between the patio deck and my sliding glass door. Following the same construction procedures that I did originally, we're just adding some PL3X construction adhesive underneath and fastening it all the way around with some screws. And since this is going to be serving as an underlay to an eventual tile system, Here we've got the tiles that I'll be using to make my new patio. These are from Ikea. I'm gonna be doing a kind of a hybrid half and half system of the gray plastic wood grain tiles and the green turf tiles. So these are all interlocking. You can mix and match these. They do come in various colors, in case you're curious and you wanna use these for one of your own projects. Unfortunately, the only bad thing about these is that they are kind of a pain to uh, interlock, especially when you're doing a larger patio system like I am. We have to come in here and trim off some of the excess to allow this to fit on the patio. So we're gonna mow the lawn, so to speak, in a vertical fashion. I've got it fitted from a width perspective, but I need to trim a little bit more off of the length because this does hang over. And I want to make sure that I have that aluminum trim available all the way around for uniformity purposes. So we're going to trim the, far, the long side as well. With the final placement, down. I gotta go ahead and remove the latching mechanisms from the inside since I'm not going to be using those. And I want that edge to be nice and flat all the way across. We gotta get these tiles out of the way and prep the surface for some paint. Since those tiles do have some gaps in them, you, you can see through them to the below surface. So I wanna make sure that that surface is at least uh, as hidden as possible from view. We're gonna paint it black. It's also gonna help kind of protect it from the weather as well. I opted for spray paint here just because I wanted it to be kind of quick drying and I didn't want to have it to be so thick that those tiles would scrape the paint off through vibration over time. Now we need a way to cover the edge of these tiles so I'm going to cut some boards and lay those out around the edge. Otherwise you have to look at the ugly plastic edge of those tiles and that's just not acceptable. They do have uh, they do have edging available for those at Ikea, but they were out of stock at my location, so we're going to have to improvise. Not only are we going to improvise, we're going to upgrade here. We're going to get a little creative with this border. I'm going to cut a channel down the center of each one of those boards. And I decided, you know what, it's about time in my build that I start adding some LEDs. I mean, every van's got to have them. But 
joking aside, when I look at modern luxury houses, they often have outdoor LED lighting accenting things like patios or walls or ceilings and roofs. I think it looks amazing, and I want to try to get a little bit of a feel of that from this truck as well. So I'm going to cut channels in these boards to run my LED strip through. And I just so happened to had some Nordic gray wood stain laying around. It actually matches the tiles almost perfectly. So that was a little bit of a nice coincidence. But also, in case you guys haven't noticed by now, I do quite enjoy the monochrome blacks, whites, and grays. So we're going to stain these gray. And then we're going to coat them with a couple layers of polyurethane gloss spray. I chose gloss because I wanted this to be resistant to dirt. I want it to be easy to clean because it's going to be getting stepped on. It's going to be out in the outdoors. It's going to be under the, under the weather. And gloss is generally just the easiest to keep clean. So here's the final product for our eventual LED strip borders. And with everything fitted, cut, and ready, we can go ahead and fasten these to the deck. And I'm using screws from underneath the deck because I don't want to tarnish the nice appearance of those boards from up above. And uh, I'm probably going to end up wrapping this door with white vinyl again. Just add another layer on there. Not only for protection, but because this layer is kind of getting worn out from the screws and everything that were already on there for over a year. LED rope that I'm using is a flexible 12 volt LED strip and it has a built-in diffuser so it's going to look like one solid light wire as opposed to that cheap looking LED rope that has the, uh, the LEDs kind of you can see where each light is it just kind of looks cheap that's one thing I really wanted to avoid here all I have to do is strip the ends it's already set for 12 volt and I've already got the truck wired so all I have to do is add some connectors to that and then we can go ahead and start stuffing this in my channel. This stuff's really easy to cut to length as well. We're just gonna snip that and add a little silicone to the end to waterproof that. I ran the same LED wires up the sides of both ends of the truck and we're going to add some silicone to the entire rope and fasten that way back in the nook on either side of the truck here. Finally the moment of truth has arrived. I get to add a fuse to my breaker box and see if this thing works. I 
I think the effect turned out great. I may have to add a dimmer at some point in the future for the lights on the sides because they are quite powerful. I ended up having to replace that socket cover that I had. It was too deep. So I ordered a slim one from Amazon and we're gonna replace that here. Even with the lower profile decking that I replaced, the door still wouldn't close with the new grass on there. So the door is thicker and a little bit heavier than it was previously. But with the slimline outlet cover on there, we can go ahead and close this thing no problem. And with everything fastened, we do a test close. Somehow it actually closes easier than with the previous plywood on there. So who knows how that works. Last thing I want to do with this is touch up the aluminum around the edge. It's taken a little bit of a beating since I installed this thing, but I also never took the time to really beautify it. So we're gonna sand it down, get all the gunk and adhesive and whatnot that's been building up on there over the last year. And prepare this for a nice layer of uh, black paint. The only way that I've found remotely possible to paint metal is to make sure that it's got a fairly decent scuff on there from sanding. So I used 220 grit on this entire strip for spray painting and it seems to held up pretty well. Despite the fact that there wasn't any water damage underneath this previously, I'm gonna add some silicone around the sides just for a little extra protection and longevity on this thing. And this is what the final product looks like from above. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think it turned out amazing. It's gonna add a lot of curb appeal, turn some heads when I pull up to these van conventions and whatnot. Don't forget to join my technobarbarian.locals.com page. We got a growing community of van enthusiasts over there. You can also get consulting from me, ask questions if you got your own build. I'll see you guys on the next one.